I grew up in northeastern Tennessee, and in our part of the country, there's a lot of Scottish cultural heritage. We're in the, in the mountains. We actually have a farm uh, back home, and we have a working farm. But my family actually married into a clan of Buchanans. <laughs> And in doing some research about those Buchanans, I found a, a story, several stories, about a man named George Buchanan. And there are actually two George Buchanans in Scotland. There's George Buchanan. He's the, the historical figure. He lived in the 16th century. He was a, a tutor to the king. And he was a very smart man. He was an historian. And, and he, in his spare time, translated the entire book of Psalms into Latin verse. He was a very smart man. The story has nothing really to do with him. <laughs> the story is about George Buchanan, the folk hero. And the folk hero, George Buchanan, unlike that historical figure, the folk hero isn't limited by time or place. The folk hero of George Buchanan, he hops around in time. You hear stories about George Buchanan placed in a lot of different time settings. And as in the story from the 9th and the 10th centuries, not with, connected with that historical figure. But in all of the stories about George Buchanan, he was always a very wise man, but he often played the fool in public. And this story from the 9th and the 10th centuries is no exception. In this, in this story about George Buchanan, he lived on the western coast of Scotland. And he lived in a wee crofting village. A crofting, can y'all say that with me? Crofting. 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 Yeah, crofting <laughs> is fishing. That was very good. That was very good. <laughs> crofting is a, a fishing village. And if you go to some of these towns in the western coast of Scotland, you'll see some of these crofting houses still preserved there. Um, some of the, the later versions of them. And the, the, the walls on these houses, they are two feet thick. And those walls are built that that thick so that they can withstand that salt spray and, and the winds coming up off the coast. Well, George Buchanan, he was a fisherman. And he lived in a wee crofting house. And every morning, he would take down his heading net, his fishing net. And I'm going to ask you to participate with me. Pretend like you're taking down your own heading net from the walls. So reach your hands up and just kind of take that heading net. Very good. Reach it down. He would take that heading net, and he would take it out on his skiff, and he would cast it out on the ocean. Everybody cast your net out. He'd cast your net out. Don't hit your neighbor, but cast your net out. And he would bring in all of the bring in all the, bring in all of the fish. And he would bring those fish back. Well, he did that every morning, as with this morning. He woke up, took his heading net, take, net, take <laughs> that heading net down, he'd take it out on his skiff, he cast that net and bring in all of the fish. And, and on this particular day, he brought the fish back in. You can drop your net. And he, he brought those fish in, and he was going out after his morning fishing. He was going out to help his father, who was working in the fields. And so he, he took that heading net, and he hung that wet net up over the fireplace. And he always did this so that the net, it would dry out so that the net wouldn't rot. He always kept his things nice. So he, he hung that heading net up over the fireplace, and he went out of that crofting house. He was going out to the fields where his father was, and he walked down the lane, and, and there's a road that, that passed through that farm. And as he walked through and, and crossed that road, he stood in the middle and he saw something. Off in the distance, it was shimmering. And he stood there in the road until that, that thing, it came closer, and as it came closer, he saw that it was a knight on horseback. George, he had never seen a knight before. <laughs> and being a clever man, he wanted to make a good impression, but he's George Buchanan. He often played the fool in public. And so as that knight came riding closer and closer, George, he just stood there in the middle of the road, staring straight up in the sky, and he was taking up that middle of the road. That night he came riding closer and closer. And George stood there, he's kind of picking at his teeth and picking at his nose. And that, that <laughs> night he came riding closer and closer. Finally, he was almost right on top of George and he reared back on his horse and he said, hey, you've got to get out of my way, I'm coming through. Well, George, he looked up at him. He said, me, I'll no get out of your way. This is my family's land. It's my part of the road. You get out of my way. <laughs> well, the night wasn't used to being talked to like this. You get out of my way or I'll run you down. Now you couldn't run me down. What do you mean? I, I could so run you down. Now you couldn't run me down. What, me up here on this big horse and you down there, you piddly little thing? Ah, but then it would be your horse running me down and not you, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he saw he was dealing with a clever man. You're a pretty clever man. I, I am. What's your name? 
George Buchanan, sir. George, have you got any family? I, I've got a sister. She's back home weeping over the fun she had last year. Weeping over the fun she had last year. And I couldn't figure it out. What, what do you mean she's back home weeping over the fun she had last year? Ah, well, you see, she's back home having a wee baby. <laughs> she's weeping over the fun she had last year. I see, George, just I see. <laughs> Have you got any other family? I, I've got my father. He's out in the fields making bad worse. Making bad worse. Well, what do you mean your father's out making bad worse? Ah, well, you see, he cut down a wee bit of hay a few days ago. Now, now, will you look up into the sky and tell me what you see? And sure enough, that night, have any of you ever been to Scotland? If you, oh, one person in the back, okay, you know, if you go to Scotland and you wait in one place for five minutes, the weather will change. <laughs> and sure enough, what had been a beautiful, cloudless day, it had started to cloud over. And that night looked up and he started to see those little drops of rain coming down. And they plunk, plunk, they started to drop onto his, his armor. And he said, I, tis a soft day, it's raining. I am a father's out in the fields trying to dry off the hay. He's making bad worse. I see. I see. And the knight saw he was dealing with a clever man. He said, George, how would you like to be my man? George liked the sound of that because as much as he liked being a fisherman, he liked the idea of being a knight's man. He said, I, I would. George, I'm going down into town. I'm getting out of this rain. You have given me some riddles. You solve three of my riddles and you can be my man. Now you come down into town tomorrow morning. You come looking and no looking. That's looking and not looking. You come into town riding and no riding. That's riding and not riding. And you come down into town clays and no clays. That's clothes and no clothes. You come down, you do those three things, you can be my man. And with that, that night he... he Toodle off around George, who was still standing there in the middle of the road with that rain coming down. And the night he went on, and George, he stood there, he tried to make sense of those riddles, and he saw his father coming up out of the field, sopping wet, taking his hat off, wringing it out, saying every curse word you could imagine. Well, well, they went back to that wee crofting house. They sat down, they made themselves a fire, and sat down, and they started to eat something, and George, he stared off into that fire, and he, he tried to make sense of those riddles. He looked into that fire and, and then he happened to look above that fireplace. And what do you think he saw? That heading net that he had hung up to dry. And he had his idea. Good night, Father. Tomorrow I'm off to be a night's man. And with that, he went over to his bed, he went to sleep, and he woke up bright and early the next morning. And he went over to that fireplace and looked up at that net. He, he took off his nightshirt and he took down that heading net and he started to wrap one leg with that heading net. And he wrapped the other leg and he wrapped and he pulled it all up to his waist and he had invented fishnet stockings. <laughs> And he kept on rapping, and he slung that excess over his shoulder. Goodbye, Father, I'm off to be a knight's man. And he went out the door, and he went down the lane. And as he was fa fa passing out of his, his father's property, he passed by the goat shed. And he picked up his father's best goat by the scruff of the neck, and he kept on walking. And he walked, and he walked until he got closer into town where he could start to see those houses that were on the outskirts of town. And as he saw those houses, he took that goat... And he took one leg and he slung one leg over that goat and he left the other leg on the ground and he gave that goat a good lick. And he started walking. A lollop, a lollop, a lollop, a lollop, a lollop, a lollop, <laughs> down the road. And he kept on going and the people in those houses tried to make sense of what they saw as they woke up and saw this man half on a goat and half on, wearing nothing, and I mean nothing but a heading net. And they saw him as he walked by, and, and that, that George, he, he got closer up to that alehouse where, where the knight was staying, and he saw that knight starting to come out of that alehouse. And, and as he did, he kept on going on that goat, but he started to turn sideways. A lollop, a lollop, a lollop, a lollop, a lollop, a lollop, a down the road. And that night, he tried to make sense of what he saw. He, he saw a man half on and 
half off a goat. He was riding and he was nor riding. He was turned profile, so he was looking, but he was nor looking. And he was wearing nothing, and I mean nothing but a herring net. He was clays, and he was nay clays. George! George, you've solved my riddles! George looked up at him. I, I'm a pretty clever man. George, I want you to be my man, but, but there's something you should know first. And with that, that night, he took off that helmet. And all the people saw that this was no night. This was the king in disguise. Because at that time, in the ninth and the 10th centuries in Scotland, the kings of old, they would ride around the countryside and just kind of check in on the nobles to make sure they were taking care of the common folk like they should. And that's what this king had been doing when he came across George standing in the middle of the road. He said, George, will you be a king's man? George looked up at him. <laughs> Straightened up, tried to look as dignified as it's possible to look, <laughs> wearing nothing but a herring net. And he said, I, sir, under one condition. Well, what's that, George? Does the job come with a better outfit? <laughs> <laughs> and that is how George Buchanan became the king's fool. Thank you. Oh.